in the interim budget 2024-25 finance minister nirmala sitaraman recognized the needs and wants of the healthcare sector to uplift the nation from boosting medical education to outlining initiatives for cervical cancer prevention healthcare sector emerged as one of the focus areas this budget to talk in depth about this i have with me shuchi re partner delight india hi shuchi hi venvi so uh suchi my first question to you is you know when the finance minister talked about establishing more medical colleges and setting up a committee to address the challenges uh where do you i mean what do you expect the colleges to be in the range of aims uh, like you know the premium uh, top level colleges or do you see them more in the or do you think there's a need for more of towards paramedical nursing or even the second tier or third tier colleges medical colleges right so um, i believe that i think the first thing that we need to be just uh, you know we need to understand that uh, if you started saying that several youth are ambitious to get qualified as doctors and you know i recall that when this ukraine war happened yeah. uh, we actually had a lot of uh, students who were pursuing medicine there so my understanding is and and there was a reason that they were not really doing it in india maybe because of the shortage of colleges or because of possibly the standards as well which are expected in india maybe uh, different uh, in, in the other countries mm. so keeping that in perspective my understanding is that it is going to be not exactly at the level of aim it is going to be a degree lower than aim however it is uh, the, the other important thing which they have also said is that they want uh, they they want more workforce uh, to so that you know we have more skilled people improved health for the improved healthcare services and uh, they want to also use the existing hospital infrastructure under various departments so that means that you know uh, uh, it's it's not really going to be purely purely of a particular standard but they will want more workforce to be coming into this uh, sector and therefore i feel that it's it's possibly is going to be a combination of nursing as well as as medical colleges okay understood uh another thing that i wanted to understand you know when uh nirmala sitaraman talked about the maternal and child care initiatives uh firstly i wanted to understand how many initiatives are there and what is the recognition of those initiatives are people actually aware of it and amalgamating all of them into one big scheme how do you think will you know uh, it will go ahead are we only talking about prenatal or we are talking even about postnatal until what age when we talk about postnatal care right so um see there are a lot of programs which are currently being run for maternal and child care like janani shishu suraksha karyakram then dakshata implementation package labor room and quality improvement initiative pradhan mantri surakshit matritva abhiyan and then there are certain ic material some guidelines some something in relation to uh, uh, improvement in various initiatives now uh, all those programs are running you know in some silos because some of them are under uh, some some program some of them are under other initiatives and overall if you see they uh, you know when when i mean look at the uh, announcement of even using the existing infrastructure also somewhere and when i think they'll when we speak on the uh, uwin portal also later maybe we'll speak but the overall i see that they are looking at really making the program more efficient and the idea is that how do they implement the things in an expeditious manner because otherwise the implementation does take time it continues to happen in silo so yeah. therefore i feel that from uh, you know from the perspective of that uh, it needs to they are they are looking at combining lot of schemes and they have very categorically spoken about synergy implementation so it's it's about really making the overall process we have the process we have the infrastructure we have the initiatives in place but have we been able to implement them in a manner which is more efficient more synergetic and it also really um, covers most of the population you know when we talk about the implementation and a, in and specifically implementation in a synergical manner uh, nirmala sitaraman also talked about cervical cancer prevention for girls age 9 yeah. to 15 so how do you see this panning out you know specifically when we put it in terms that last year uh, we she talked about sickle cell anemia 
and how has sickle cell anemia actually if we take a you know a recap in one month, uh, year's time what has been the progress has we achieved uh, the target that was put out at that time similarly going forward what how the whole uh, so uh, cervical cancer prevention uh, program will actually roll out what do you think will be the loopholes that you can see right now such kind of uh, uh, disease is being recognized that yes women at the later stages do you know they do have vulnerability with respect to this type of cancer and uh, there is a uh, you know there is a need of having this vaccination actually at an early age because then one can just have i think two vaccines of cervical cancer and it is done as 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 the girl uh, you know uh, gets matured and as the age it, it, the, the the lady grows it it actually is very difficult to have the vaccine uh, you know having a good impact so therefore i think i'm i'm pretty happy that she's also very categorically spoken about a group of 9 to 14 years because that's the that's the age when one is actually required to take this this particular vaccine now coming to whether you know it is something which will really uh, you know be done uh, or whether it will be something which you know which which whether it will really uh, uh, be considered or be taken very positively by the public i think my understanding is there is a very important uh, element of awareness which needs to be uh, undertaken i think lot of people even you know even people in urban area also will not really be aware of uh, not everyone will be aware of of this type of cancer and why it is important because even when you go to doctors today it's frankly an optional vaccine it's not a compulsory vaccine today as well they do suggest but parents depending upon their own understanding they go for it so if it is now coming and it is found a place in the budget i think the importance of that has been clearly demonstrated so that's one hmm. second is i think uh, uh, somewhere when they have spoken about uh, uh, you know you win platform uh, for managing the immunization and then she has also spoken about the intensified efforts of uh, mission indra dhanush i think while it is not really getting categorized in all those seven or eight diseases which are uh, you know for which the vaccination program is being undertaken under mission and indra dhanush but i feel that somewhere it is going to further taken care of under that because then you will actually have the records you will actually have campaigns and then you will you are actually using the digitization to further expand the program okay you know now that we've talked about the uven platform as well i wanted to come to no. uven and understand uh boosting immunization efforts and with the platform while we know covid was a very big win for all of us it made everything uh, so yeah. easy and it uh, so streamlined the process was very easy for everybody to access so with okay. you when what do you think uh, where do you see the problem approaching or do you see it as a, a platform which is going to have the same kind of hit that covid had see, i i personally feel that covid was a very big hit i mean even today also people actually use covid when someone has to really download the a vaccine certificate and yeah. it just comes extremely handy and therefore therefore that means something we have proved that we are able to do and if we are able to actually use the uh, the similar platform which they are saying under uwin portal which was actually launched uh, some time back hmm. and that particular thing so if we are able to do it for one disease we can actually do it for all others as well and uh, it's very clear that you know this particular program is actually because it has been recently launched and it is going to it's it's with an aspect of really keeping a document of all the vaccinations or immunization program in the country including you know any registration or any follow ups or any vaccine certificates which are required i feel i think you know this is actually if if again i think with the good awareness campaign covid was obviously more like a necessity and a, and and, and uh, you know it was the need of the hour. maybe i think possibly some of the vaccines may not be today the need of the hour and therefore people may not take this particular portal very seriously but if it is done for the children who you know with the compulsory vaccines i think you know if that that starts and possibly some past records with the uh, pending vaccine something like that if we are able to start i think then this this particular uh, initiative will actually uh, you know will be actually be benefited uh, will will benefit the population at large but i i clearly feel that we have the capability we have demonstrated it mm. and therefore and now looking at using indra dhanush for uh, you know for and uvin portal 
Hmm. And, and if you see, see, Yuvin uh, has also got a very clear aim of uh, uh, you know of it. It wants the uh, the programs to reach in each and every area of of India. You know, whether in very remote areas also, where possibly you know it's very difficult to sometimes convince. Uh, say the tribal population or you know people who are not very educated hmm. uh, it's very important that you know with some data someone actually kind of reaches there and is able to explain the importance and the need for it and overall if you see the budget is taking care of somewhere you know that how do we reach each and every person in the country uh you know my last question shuchi is i wanted to understand considering it's an interim budget do you see or has this budget you know lived up to your expectation did you expect more from sita raman and it delivered less or do you think she delivered more than what you actually expected and subsequently when it comes to the full blown budget after the general elections where do you uh, want her to you know specifically put her focus towards so i think one uh, thing with respect to green agenda uh, you know which is with the uh, uh, for the bio manufacturing and bio foundry for even bio pharmaceuticals also that has been spoken which is i think a welcome move definitely and we'll see how the team really helps uh, uh, in you know in in getting this particular thing uh, achieved uh, more important is that uh, Mm, from pharmaceutical perspective or for the industry players i think the research and development is something which is extremely important uh, there are programs and the intent of the government is obviously to uh, create an environment which is more innovative uh, which is uh, you know where people where the companies are able to spend more on r&d and they are not only working towards the generic but towards innovative drugs and keeping that in perspective and you know some weighted deductions so something which is beyond what otherwise everyone is getting some tax incentives around that is definitely what is expected in the main budget and and i am i'm hopeful that that comes because that has been the ask of the industry okay uh thank you so much for your time uh, suchi and thank you so much for your insights